I do. I'm pretty sure I do. I think it guys don't carry a couple extra pounds to get down there. Yeah. 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 So who do I want to add to the <laughs> <laughs> today? I want to do Ace Turner. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you have that right. I appreciate it. <laughs> you have someone right there. I think his dad was in there. We're still going with it. We have everything lined up and everything's working well. We just. Do teams like PPHA on all the projects? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's sad. <coughs> Absolutely. Nothing's more important. Pretty out. Muffins are good. I see that. You better have one. Yeah, right there. Other duties as assigned. Yeah, at least those two overdrive and hard yet to get drive the two travelers that are leaving. This is, um, <coughs> but in fact, I was just saying, I have to leave a few minutes early to go to where this morning? So, I think it, it is, it is nonstop iron. Uh, Boston and then San Diego. Home route. Boston first and then San Diego. Yeah. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of time zone. Oh, there you go. Okay. I just we have we have places all over North America, so I have to travel a lot of U.S. Awesome. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I might be on the road probably three three days, sometimes five days a week. So I have a lot of flights. How about you? Are you here mostly? I think he's more. Just a driver. Doesn't come in the plaza now. That's the wood pepper cave, maybe 20 years ago. The other side. I don't know how long Becky's been there. That's awesome. It was a long time back in the day. Oh, planning before he became a city minister. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 
long time ago. That's, that's true. We moved. I was uh, in the Church of Alchemy last year. Church of Walk. Okay. We moved into the building. Oh, the old building yeah. down here. You guys were far up there. Oh, that was that was awesome. What a great building. Thanks. Is it all you? Is the building all you guys? So that was part of your master plan? That's a good point. Uh, we've not um, one of my, my, one of my friends is a lawyer right on the plaza. They're building their office buildings on the plaza. It's named George Hansen Siegel or Hansen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, and uh, his office literally overlooks the street where the whole plaza Arthur is. So they have a little party every year on Friday night. It's really cool. So you get to let you, you can watch the whole thing happen. And, and, And if you if you sit at his desk and look out the window, you all he sees is the Victoria's Secret building with the models <laughs> in the front. The whole thing. So I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, you really don't. You don't, don't think about you don't think about what's on the second, second or third level up there. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? All right. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Thank you. We're hoping to uh, have our uh, technology assistance here so we can get the, the uh, overhead monitors turned on. Um, that may happen. Um, and I apologize that we don't have those on. Uh, but we will hand out a hard copy uh, agenda and a hard copy of the presentation slide deck. Uh, so hopefully everyone has a copy of both of those now. If you don't, please raise your hand. He's passing it out. Well, I want to welcome everyone here today to our uh, to our meeting. Um, Bob Burkevile is still traveling, so he'll be he'll be with us in spirit again today. Um, and uh, so we'll continue on. And, and Bob, bless you, Bob. Bob will uh, I'll continue to keep Bob apprised of uh, our progress. Um, a couple of things. I I don't know if. Uh, by by show of hands, uh, has anyone accessed uh, or or watched these proceedings on television channel two? Has anybody done that? Jay says he has. I'm going to check his social calendar. Um, does anybody have any questions on how to access channel two or how to watch these proceedings? Um, did they want to ask Jay? I'm sorry, Chairman, I missed that. No, that's okay. Um, I, I just wanted to see if there was any, uh, if anybody had any questions about accessing Channel 2. Um, yes, sir. Uh, I went to the website this morning, and 
there's no information on the website that would give those instructions, so it might be helpful. Then we could refer people to the website. Okay. Pardon me? Under miscellaneous meetings, not under a specific meeting heading, and that's part of the issue. I've had constituents call our office and ask how to find it. Okay, thank you. Jay, uh, maybe we can take that feedback, and if there's some additional instructions we can have about accessing Channel 2. How, how does one access Channel 2 uh, if they have nothing to do uh, on a weekend, they want to look at these proceedings. I think you underestimate the uh, the popularity of Channel Two, Mr. Chairman. But, okay. Uh, uh, you go. To, you can do one of two things. Uh, you can certainly um, um, tune in just simply to Channel Two and catch it on replay. You can also go to kcmo.org. Um, there is a um, there's a couple different ways you can get to it. Um, you can simply go to I want to watch channel two and you can pull it up online uh, that way and watch it. Uh, you can select segments of any any public hearing that goes on. Um, you can also go into the, the search bar and just say, um, I think what did I search last time, airport, uh, airport advisory group or, or something pretty generic and it pulls it up and says this is, this is what's available to watch. So you don't have to wait for Channel 2 to cycle through. You, you can... Uh, no, it's posted online, and that's for any commission. Uh, any commission that, that, is, uh, that meets in this room or meets in a chambers that we have the ability to broadcast out of, you can always go in and search planning and zoning, transportation and infrastructure, uh, any one of our committees, and pull up uh, recent or past meetings and watch them. Okay. I, w I would encourage our... Our panelists, uh, our advisory group, maybe uh, before the next meeting, just try to do what Jay suggested. And um, I think if if we're able to do it, and then we're in other circles, and you're talking to people, and they say, "Well, how's it going?" Well, I think if you're informed uh, about how to access Channel Two, then maybe you can recommend to others how to access it as well. I'm, I'm going to go back and do that myself and uh, so I can uh, inform others and, and share the information another way rather than, rather than get into a long conversation. Um, when people ask me, how's it, how's it going? Um, and it's hard to have less than a 10-minute conversation uh, about how is it going but if you could just say in 10 seconds, well, if you want to see for yourself, just go do this, then maybe you can be more efficient about it. And uh, so let's try to, let's try to do that. Um, we are preparing, uh, this, this week we'll be sending out our, or posting rather, our RFP request for our outside consultant and uh, uh, we're about, a, a, I think, a, within a day of doing that, uh, and we will uh, have that open for approximately two weeks for a response, and so we should, uh, we should have uh, soon uh, some of our consultant candidates, and uh, they will be in position to move forward to hire the consultant who will do a variety of things for us um, and, and we'll be in a position to be able to advise us on providing information about other airports, passengers, other benchmarking, what, what airports have done uh, after they've had uh, capital improvement projects and the like. So um, we will begin thinking about what kinds of questions we'll want the consultants to provide answers to for us. Uh, and uh, that'll be forthcoming in future meetings, but we're, we're going to start working on those types of questions even as early as today a little bit. So that's, uh, that, that's coming, and, and that will add a new, a new dimension to our work uh, because uh, we want to hear from uh, about other airports. We've heard a lot about the Kansas City Airport in our airport school, but now we're ready to start learning about other airports. We're, armed with 
the knowledge that we have. Um, okay, I wanted to uh, give us opportunity after you've had time to reflect on the last meeting where we had a, a, a much deeper dive on capital improvements and the costs related to that. Um, I wanted to see if, uh, if anyone had any thoughts and observations um, that they'd like to share from, from the last meeting or any, any carryover questions. Yes, Kevin. At uh, some point in the future when we begin to kind of evaluate all of the information that we've received and, you know, and process it, will we be able to drill down deeper into some of those numbers in terms of the, uh, the renovation projections, more of a detailed or a third-party estimator, that type of thing? Yes. Yeah, that was... Uh, the, the meeting was intended to get an, give us an overview, just the form as to how they go about it. Um, I think we'll probably be attempting to validate several numbers on their line items uh, during the course of our uh, future meetings with, with various stakeholders. So, for example, if we were going to uh, look at, well, what increase uh, rent could we expect from the airlines? Well, when we're talking the airlines, we'll, we'll, ask, we'll be able to pose some questions to look at some ranges. Uh, we'll be able to uh, validate what other airports cost per employment is. So, yeah, yes, several lines. That was just to kind of give us the total, total picture how, as to how they did it. Great. Thank you. It, it was also an opportunity for us to see how much work the airport had already done. So if, if we were to ask them to come in and they didn't have the kind of materials they had, we would maybe wonder how much detailed work have they done. But the fact that their CFO was able to come prepared that, that had that much data uh, was comforting. At least they've been pushing a lot of numbers down up there. Other questions or observations? Yes, Bill. I, I had an interesting conversation the other day with an individual I probably haven't seen in 10 or 15 years from St. Louis that does consulting for one of the major carriers at KCI and wanted to know how, how our committee was coming along and what the feel of was Kansas City. This airline has not come out in favor of, of a new terminal, but this person told me they certainly hoped that we did and that that, that that the airlines are watching what we're doing pretty close. So I, I thought that was interesting that a person on the other side of the state's watching, although it does work for one of the airlines, but was paying close attention to what we're doing, the airlines are. And that this airline hopes that we do get a new terminal for them. Okay. This was an employee of one of the airlines? Oh, okay, okay. person that works indirectly with them. Okay. I thought it was kind of interesting that, that, that folks are watching us from around, not just okay. in our immediate neighborhoods. You might want to send him the information on how to get on Channel 2, <laughs> and uh, he, could, he could just watch along, I watch along with us. Knows how to do it. Okay. Know what we were doing. Okay, okay, good. Um, well, to, to remind those of you that were not here uh, last time, we, uh, I wanted to just kind of touch on some of the key learnings. We try to do that at the end of every meeting, at the beginning of every meeting, just to keep continuity. And um, some of the key learnings we, uh, we heard the last meeting is that, um, you know, we had our, our, uh, our two uh, aviation department employees, to refresh your memory, uh, Phil Muncie, who was the assistant director of aviation planning and engineering division. He spoke he was the one that spoke on the, some of the detailed capital improvements that were needed. He knows the physical plant very well. And then John Green, uh, the chief financial officer of the aviation department, um, is the one that uh, uh, presented some of the modeling, uh, that pro forma information on what if. And uh, what we learned from Phil um, is that uh, even sticking with the three-terminal 
uh, configuration, uh, but allowing some type of connectivity between those terminals and repairing all of the foundation work and a lot of the other uh, out of view type work um, that that had a, uh, an estimate uh, in in his own calculations, uh, not an out from an outside sort of, but uh, several hundred million, I think six to seven hundred million uh, to do all of that work for all three terminals, closing one at a time and then consolidating the other two and then doing one terminal and then continuing on closing another one and opening uh, the newest one on down the line. It would take several years, um, but at least uh, we have some idea what work needs to be done now because we've seen it ourselves and we have at least a starting point on a price tag, albeit um, in, in turn, internally estimated. Um, and then we learned uh, uh, from John Green that Enfil, uh, uh, that if, after we spend six or seven hundred million, um, they were they were cautious to remind us that we would not have really expanded the walls of the terminal in the front of the back uh, much to speak of, and so we would still have the same configuration. Uh, but we would not have any of the uh, other uh, conveniences that we have said are important when we've analyzed our key performance indicators. And so we'd still end up with uh, the, pretty much uh, the same airport, but albeit one maybe that's a little more updated from the physical plant point of view uh, with the out of view uh, work just to eliminate the leakage uh, and, and some of the other aspects that uh, just a 40-year-old building have. Um, so we, we at least have, have narrowed the gap on what incremental change is uh, from a dollar point of view um, between uh, rehabilitating the status quo, six to seven hundred million, versus other alternatives that have been presented uh, with a drastic change to, to the configuration um, uh, in, in John's words, uh, uh, could be as low as 900 million or as high as the, the other number we don't talk about anymore. Um, but that's the, the, you know, the gold standard, if you will. So at least we, at least we know where the gap is. It's not, it's not zero in some number. It's maybe six to 700 million in some number. And so that's what we, that's what we learned. So I think what we'd like to do now is uh, congratulate everyone on completing airport school. And, and uh, we, we uh, in my conversations with each of you, each of you have said that you've learned a lot, I've learned a lot. I go to airports now looking at them a lot differently than I do, than I did before. Cause I, I can envision what's happening to my, my luggage or I can envision a lot of other aspects, and, and I'm watching other things when I go into other airports. I hope you all are too. I find myself um, not even thinking about the trip I'm taking. I'm looking at passenger drop-off, security, all those, all those things. So it's, it helps, helps pass the time when I travel, actually. Um, but I think we want to move on past airport school now and get into the second phase of uh, uh, our project, and, and that is really to uh, start talking to other key stakeholders. And I think that's, uh, that's going to be real important. A lot of people out in the public have said, well, I don't think they've talked to the airlines yet. I don't think they've talked to this group. How do they know? They haven't talked to this group yet. Well, now we're getting ready to do that, and we'd like some orderly fashion uh, to, uh, to go through that. Uh, we have our list of uh, key performance indicators that we have passed out at other meetings. I don't know if, if you all have those or not um, handy, but I, I brought some extra copies. And, and I might ask Jay to help 
passes that to anyone that would like another copy of the key performance indicators, please, please raise your hand um, and Jay can give you another copy. So, Jay, if we could go to the next slide, please. It's coming down. There. It's coming down. And please, just just take one, if you don't have other, otherwise have one, so we can have a few left over. If you recall our mission statement, our mission statement is on the bottom of every agenda. Uh, We've, we've listed out uh, the major focus areas, and um, you can see them listed on the screen here. Uh, the, these are the ways that uh, the way that we've kind of organized our approach, um, and it seemed to have some easy uh, grouping of some of the key performance indicators. So that's what we've that's what we've done. And uh, because your responses on ranking or prioritizing the key performance indicators was so intrinsically linked between convenience and adaptability, I've lumped those together. And, and uh, because they're related, because almost every instance, if you remember, what we rate as, as highest in convenience, there was a close second in most, if not all cases, of adaptability, realizing that, that, that uh, those are linked together for overall uh, flexibility. I think we obviously think that's important, uh, and, and, and so have others that we've, we've talked to. So these are the major areas uh, that we have, and your key performance indicators are in columns ranked uh, uh, in this fashion. So now if we go to the next slide, uh, we're going to ask that uh, uh, we have a subcommittee assignment uh, to, to further engage you members. Uh, we're going to ask that we break up into subcommittees for a meeting for some brainstorming, not, not at this meeting, but the next meeting. So uh, everybody maybe has a particular interest that they have or a particular area that they might uh, want to delve into. And so we will uh, uh, ask each of you, and we'll send this out elect electronically as well, um, Jay, if you could pass that one, one other sheet, please, the, the subcommittee sign up. If you would please indicate, put your name on this form, and then uh, put a number in the box uh, next to the, uh, the major focus areas, uh, indicating your priority, your priority of interest. Now, this is not going to be an assignment that's going to last forever, so you're not, you're not making a life choice here, uh, so don't treat it that way. Um, you'll have other opportunities to work in, in all of these areas, but for purposes of our, our next brainstorming session, the next meeting, you'll have an opportunity to uh, work on an area that you have uh, some experience in or a, or a passion or an interest or no additional knowledge. And so put a, put a one in the box that is your highest preference and a two from there, et cetera, and just please turn that in at the end of the meeting. And, and we'll make every effort to uh, spread out the group. We can't all work in one area. And uh, we'll try to spread out the group and give you as high as a preference as possible um, for the next meeting. 
and what will the, what will the discussion be? So you can be thinking about it, uh, and, and this will be the topic of the next meeting when you meet, is uh, when you're looking at the uh, key performance indicators underneath the particular subject, the, mark, the major focus that you have, there's going to be certain stakeholders that are going to impact that particular key performance indicator. And, and as you're thinking about that, we'd like to you to think about uh, validating who are the key performance indicators. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But what are important questions and information requests do we want to make of those stakeholders? So let's go to the next slide, Jay, and we'll maybe go through an example. So here are, here are the list of the stakeholders that you all rated as <clears throat> most impacted or having the most influence on affordability. These are the, these are the stakeholders that, that you all felt were most applicable. And, and so, um, you know, pick, pick airlines on there. What questions would we have of the airlines around affordability? I mean, think back to Kevin's comment about are we going to get to look at some of those line items. We're, we're going to want to hear from the airlines uh, about what decisions they make in terms of rent and, and you know, ticket prices and the like. Uh, and, and, and so we will have those questions and those asks of information so we can help prepare those stakeholders when we ask them to come visit us here in a meeting. So it won't just be random questions. We'll actually, we'll prepare and we'll be able to even provide the stakeholders in advance and you know, what the questions might be so they can prepare. So we'll get, have good, good robust discussions and not just random, random questions that bounce around. And so this is, this is what we'll ask the subcommittees to talk, talk about amongst themselves when you're meeting. If you're in the affordability major market area, you're first validating, do we think these are the, the right stakeholders for affordability? And then what would be the questions we'd want to ask? And, and group your questions uh, for each stakeholder. Any, any questions on that? Is that pretty clear? So between now and the next meeting, uh, you, you can, you know, be thinking about that. You can be thinking, just look at each of these different groupings and uh, give some thought to are we missing a stakeholder and, and even think about some questions. And if you, if you plan ahead, like for example, um, if you came to the next meeting and you had thought about each of these major areas and you had some questions you want to make sure get asked, but you find that you're not in that group, you can at least share your questions with that group. So it's as if you're attending more than one subcommittee meeting at a time. If you throw your questions over to those other groups and say, here's some other questions, even though I'm not sitting in your subcommittee little group, here's some questions I hope you put down. Please put these questions down the list. So in a sense, you'll be able to touch each one of the subcommittees if you plan ahead a little bit. These are really listed in the order that you all felt were important. So we're beginning to prioritize within a particular market focus area 
We're beginning to prioritize uh, who we want to talk to. And you'll find when we go through each one of these slides, we have touched each of the stakeholders that we had on our sheet. So there's no stakeholder that is absent from looking at all these areas. So we'll, we'll at least touch each stakeholder once that we identified if we go by going through this process. So nobody, at the end of the process, will be able to say, wave their hands, hey, nobody talk to me and I'm a major stakeholder. We're gonna, we're gonna touch them all. So I'd just like to ask you, as we have affordability up here, does anybody see uh, a stakeholder that maybe is missing, just offhand? It's not scientific, but does anything come to mind? Yes, Alicia. Certainly the business community um, uses KCI a great deal. Do we just consider that they then are KC residents? I mean, I, I just, I'm not sure where they fit there um, in the business community. They may not be KC residents, but they're certainly using the airport a great deal. I, I was, I, I think you'll find that on the next slide okay. about business generation. The question is, you know, not only did we, when we went through our exercise, not only we say who are the potential stakeholders affected by any aspect of the airport, we tried to put the stakeholders in the area where they were predominant, where they would have an impact. And, and I think you'll find to that one specifically, they're in the business generation uh, category, which means it's not so much that the business community is going to pay for building the airport or making major renovations or in terms of affordability of what capital improvements might be done. It's more a question of uh, what does the business, business community think they need for it to, to drive economic impact in the city. Any other thoughts about affordability? Okay. Let's go to the next slide, Jay. Um, oh, and by the way, the, these, uh, I, I put these in this order uh, purposefully, uh, first and foremost, because as we've talked, you, we've got to make sure we can af afford whatever is done, and so that's why I put affordability first, because some of the early decisions about whether to do anything come from that first stakeholder group. Uh, but clearly, the area that got the most, uh, you know, the highest responses in terms of uh, the key performance indicators and <clears throat> has the most activity and, and discussion is in the convenience and adaptability. And so uh, here on this slide, uh, we've listed uh, those key stakeholders that had the, uh, the highest number of mention or the highest applicability. And so let, let's look at this slide and see if we uh, are hitting the right stakeholders. Obviously, the passengers and visitors are the ones that use the airport, uh, passing through or coming from out of town, visiting the city. The citizens, Kansas City residents, um, those are individuals that both use the airport and don't use and don't use the airport. Both, um, um, and and so that that encompasses the the broadest spectrum of citizens. And then you can see the other, others down that, that are either most impacted or have the most comments uh, and, and uh, uh, passion about it.
Any thoughts? Any thoughts on this? And as you're thinking about uh, preparing for the next meeting, uh, further defining who these stakeholders are will be important too. So when we say the hospitality travel industry, we're going to give some thought to what does that mean? Convention, convention and Visitor Association, hotel owners, you know, so uh, we want to make sure that we're touching the the right organizations that have the most uh, impact, that, that would, would be in the know the most. Like if, if, if for example, you throw out Kansas City Area Development Council, KCADC, they're the organization that recruits businesses to the greater Kansas City area. Uh, other EDCs around, around the city. Um, what do they hear from businesses coming to Kansas City looking at potentially relocating here? I mean, that, that would be good information. So we really want to make sure that we get a good list of who to talk to. And then we have this outreach uh, to those organizations. On, on down the line. This is a continuation. Um, the first slide where we listed the convenience and adaptability, the, these, are, these are people that, that, have, that, that would have certain insights into using the airport and the like. This next group, uh, they are related to convenience and adaptability, but, but maybe from a little bit different focus uh, as to why they're listed here under convenience and adaptability. Um, you can see we've listed some of the reasons, there's many reasons why the airlines uh, might have an interest here. Uh, adaptability and convenience to the airlines might be easy movement between gates if they have to uh, board passengers from changing gates, um, you know, right right now it's 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 uh, cut and dried. Which airlines have control over which gates? And and as we, if we would be rehabilitating all three terminals, and if we shut one terminal down and have to consolidate the airlines into the other two, and the airlines need their their counters and, and, and all of their, their own backroom office and baggage handling and boarding their specifics. Um, we hear from the airlines as pointed out, well, that's, that's not as adaptable because you, they've got to go in and reconstruct things even temporarily. And so that's, that's just an example of why the airlines might care about convenience and adaptability. Um, or how they board passengers. Uh, some airlines uh, will have the, the new uh, pre-approved traveler. Air, other airlines won't. And, and that is impacted by, we learned in the last meeting, it's impacted by the adaptability of the space that they're currently occupying, whether or not they'll be able to offer that and, and how valuable it'll be to passengers. So, that's just a couple examples on, on what that means uh, on the airlines under convenience adaptability. Same with the, the TSA and the, and the EPA. We've, we've heard about the, uh, the de-icing pads. Um, how does that impact uh, the convenience to the airlines in, in time between uh, flight takeoffs and, and the light positioning um, and, and just energy and water. So. Uh, there will be innumerable reasons why these stakeholders are involved and would have some input into convenience and adaptability. And so uh, there will be some times when we'll be having a future meeting focused on a particular focus area, but there will be other times, like when we have the airlines here, we may touch on more than one focus area 
while the airlines are here we might talk about affordability and convenience adaptability when the airlines are here so it just depends on where those stakeholders fall uh, but that's why this would kind of be our guide so we make sure that we we ask the right questions while we have the benefit of having a stakeholder in the room with us all right, let's go to the all right let's here, here's your business creation here, here's where the the business community um, falls and, and uh, they were far and away uh, the most often mentioned uh, group of stakeholders in the business creation um, and and so there's there's many many reasons to even have an airport one is so the the citizens can move freely between cities but also um, the economic impact the business creation is also an important consideration for us uh, to have airport facilities that enhance the ability of the companies headquartered here and the, and the people that do business here uh, enhances their opportunities for success um, and if that increased activity provides economic impact uh, either through corporate revenue or through <coughs> additional taxes sales taxes and like that that's all uh, helpful to uh, the local economy and and so let's look at this for a minute and see if uh, we think we have the right group of stakeholders here uh, for business creation Yes, John. I, I would just uh, suggest a couple of groups on there. While you have business community, chamber of commerce, I mean, that's very broad. I, I think for me specifically, we need to include the MBE, WBE community. Uh, that, that needs to be a segment that, that's uh, as part of the key stakeholders. The other thing, too, is while we have cities of greater Kansas City area, we can't forget about our counties as well. We have a lot of county governments that, that certainly are doing business uh, and are going to benefit from uh, any expansion. So those would be the two groups that I would offer. Okay. That's helpful, John. I've, I've added on the city, the cities and counties, and um, the, the, the groups you mentioned are, are come under workforce development. The, they'll, be, they'll be picked up there. Okay. Because that was, they were actually specifically listed uh, parenthetically after workforce development on our stakeholder sheet so we, we won't forget them other suggestions I think it's important one, one of the reasons that that I'm, I wanted to do this is um, to help inform the broader community when they when they see this and when we put this information on our website and this shows up on channel two and when we get when we go by social media the stakeholders will see that we contemplate talking to them so the issue that I mentioned earlier yes work in different environments and I don't see us having them listed under anything the actual people that will work in those facilities or at the airport how they perceive changes will affect what they're doing how do we approach them to get their feedback on some of these different categories um, let's let's make sure that we pick that up either either under workforce development as a general category or that we when we look at uh, uh, each each component of let's say retail vendors or transportation vendors that that's not just the company but also the employees would that 
Well, I want to make sure we include the actual employees that are working currently at the airport as well. Okay. We tend to go into any line of business and make changes and forget to include the people that it actually directly affects. Okay. So like, uh, for example, maybe TSA employees that if we've already, we've learned that Kansas City employs a larger number of TSA employees than most other airports. If the airport went to some other configuration that was more efficient from a TSA point of view, we would need less TSA employees. Is that an example of what you're... And part of the, when you get into it, I would think the design of things, how those designs would affect how those people do their jobs. Yes, okay. I mean, not necessarily gaining a job or losing a job, but just how they do it. Okay. I'll make a note of that on, and, and we'll make sure that we keep that in mind. Okay. That, might be a, that might be a common theme when we talk about any organization. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so we finished my thought. The, the community will, will have much more insight into who we're talking to. So I think that will help address the, uh, that what is the, one of the most common uh, discussion points I get is how come you haven't talked to XYZ organization yet? So the, we will now, we're now telegraphing who we're going to be talking to, which I think will help. Okay, Jay. Uh, moving across our, our focus areas, security, uh, these, these are uh, the most common stakeholders in that, uh, in that space. It's no co co coincidence that it seems like airlines pops up on almost every, <laughs> every category. <laughs> yes. Not sure where it fits, but um, I believe there's um, airport police, and I, I, don't, I don't believe that they are TSA or FAA. They may be KCMO airport police. I don't, I don't know that for sure. Okay, we'll add, we'll add that. That's a good expansion of. Airport police. Mr. Chairman, I would also add that you need, that we have a fire department that's, we have a firehouse that's stationed specifically at the airport that probably ought to be considered as well. Yes. There's a term for that. <laughs> that's a good term. First responders. First responders, yes, that's yeah. thank you. Who said that? Thank you, thank you. Okay. Yes, I, I know there's been some issues uh, or are, are issues about um, the ability of the fire department to have access to water and it, at various places around the airport. So I know that's, yeah, if we want to talk to them about that. Okay, they're good additions. And then the last one is the uh, environmental performance. pretty much self-explanatory, but, uh, you know, that's uh, the luxury we have of having Bob Berkebile on this committee is that he is Mr. Green, and uh, so we'll, we'll definitely have some robust, I'm sure he'll be able to expand on some of the uh, green sustainability community and, and 
and have knowledge of the EPA and, and the Missouri Division of Natural Resources. So you, you can envision um, that we will have the major focus areas, we'll have the stakeholders in that area, we'll have the questions grouped and, and such that will be, will be very nimble and if we ever have the opportunity to invite a particular stakeholder or if we hold, if we, if we go to other venues, if, if we uh, and I would really like to brainstorm a little bit with you uh, about our outreach to some of these stakeholders. We, we, we maybe uh, might move to add other forums. Uh, for example, maybe we have a, a business community forum. Maybe we just kind of throwing something out loud. Uh, maybe we go to the, some chambers of commerce and, and, uh, and say we, we want to uh, ask for their support to help us put together a, a business panel that, that will share with us what business needs from an airport. And we're not going to call those businesses to, to debate, you know, the quality of the restrooms. We're, we're going to we'll keep our questions focused so we don't, you know, so we're efficient about it. So we don't just rehash the same old questions over and over again. But when we meet with a business community, ask them the questions or, you know, we, why are you headquartered here? What is it that caused you to be headquartered here or to stay here that is touched by the airport? Maybe other reasons. You know, Cerner might say, well, we, we're headquartered here because this is where we were founded and we're going to stay here as long as we can attract and retain enough IT employees to, uh, to satisfy their, their growth you read about in the paper. Well, that may or may not be impacted by an airport. So we'll, we'll be interested in what, what's impacted by the airport and what else about business. So that's just an example. So we may have other forums that we will need to hold uh, in between our meetings with very targeted st stakeholder outreach. I think that'll be important. So when we, when we, s there's a lot of other outreach going on beyond our purview and, and that will continue to go on. But when we sanction an outreach for a particular focus area and for with stakeholders, then we'll be able to have our questions asked and answered and our information gathered in an orderly fashion and, and, and stay razor-like focused on those aspects that affect that stakeholder in that area. Any thoughts or reaction to that? I, I like Richard. that idea, Dave, about having those kind of focus groups or forums or whatever within the different uh, key stakeholders. I mean, it's a great idea. I think it's the only way uh, we can effectively and efficiently have conversations and have multiple conversations maybe going on within a two-week period. Because uh, if we, we'll be here for, we'll be here for years if we put each of these end to end. And I, I don't intend for it to go that long. <laughs> Yes, David. It strikes me that in advance of those discussions, we would need to make sure that those groups understood the myths and facts that are out there on this project because I would guess that if they don't have that information in advance, you'd spend the entire meeting just talking about the myths and facts. And I think that's the key issue this group faces, which there are so many myths in the community about what this project is and how it will work. I think for us to lay that out in advance so they can come to the meeting and already know all that. Yes. Move to the core issues and be very productive. That's a, that's a good comment, and, and that's something that we've contemplated. And I think that um, one way to do that will be, as, uh, as Bob and I have been summarizing our key learnings from each meeting of airport school, I think we intend to condense that down to, you know, one or two sheets of paper. 
And, and so if you can envision each of the airport school meetings we've had where we've had key learnings or aha moments about uh, how, what, the, what the facts are, if we have those summarized, that kind of becomes, that's baseline information. We're not here to debate baseline information anymore. And, and, and that'll be a starting point to, to your point, David. We'll, we'll start from that and move forward. We're not going to go back and, um, you know, we, we may need a few minutes at each of these meetings to educate uh, the audience on the facts and our key learnings, but, but we won't debate misinformation when we go into these meetings for sure. Okay. Other questions or thoughts? And, and we'll be sensitive to your time. We, we, we won't be able to have every one of, of you or us at each one of these outreach stakeholder meetings. You're certainly free to uh, attend one of them, but, but to manage expectations, we're not going to ask everybody to be at every meeting, but we'll ask you know, representatives. Uh, when, when we have sanctioned meetings, we'll have uh, prepared sanctioned representatives. And, and uh, I think that will, that will help. Um, and so the, the sanctioned representatives or spokes, spokespeople for that particular area, that particular stakeholder will, will, will be there and kind of be able to speak on behalf of the of our advisory group. I think that's one of the reasons why we have avoided having any real uh, physical or, you know, outward presence at any of the, some of the community meetings this, up to this point, because it really hadn't been through airport school and we didn't, uh, we thought it's premature for someone from this group to get pulled into a, a debate or a dialogue uh, at some of those outreach meetings until we were prepared and, and so we're getting to that point. And, and uh, so we'll be more, we'll, we'll be more visible um, and uh, uh, authoritative when we appear at some of the meetings that invariably are gonna occur. Okay, so as we've gone through these, these key focus areas and you've been jotting down, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to work in that area. I, I, that's of interest to me. Or I, 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 I know a lot of those stakeholders. Or, I, or my position or my prior involvement would help me work with those stakeholders, answer those questions. So that might help you prioritize what you say you'd like to work on before you turn that in at, at, at the end of today's meeting. Now we have another action step that we'd like you to do. And uh, that is, Jay, if we could go to our next, our next slide. This is another homework assignment that we'll begin focusing on. And you have your, your key performance indicators sheet. And if you focus on a particular column, there are several items where there is either an H or an M. So it either had a you know high uh, association or a medium, which means it might have been a close second, but certainly was weighted also very prominent. And so now I would like you all to uh, yourself prioritize the items indicated in a particular column. And so if we, if we picked on um, convenience, because that's easy, easy to make the example, the convenience column, um, there's a lot of key performance indicators that have a high response. They're deemed important or there's a lot of 
a lot of discussion about them. If I just read down the H's, you got curbside amenities, luggage handling at all points, parking, passenger check-in process, passenger waiting areas and electrical outlets when Wi-Fi access, restrooms, retail amenities, both secure and non-secure, and walking distance between key points. And, and when you think about walking distance, all think about time. You know, I, I, we probably are, you know, encompass both of those, walking distance and or time between key points. Those all had high, very high mention. And there's several others in there that were M's also, which means it was a close second or a lot of mention. So now I will ask you all to take that sheet and, and we'll provide electronically as well. But of those areas that have a letter, either H or an M, now put those in order. Prioritize those. They're not, they can't be equal. All the H's can't be equal. And we're going we're gonna to force rank those items in each column. So I'm asking you to give some thought. Which is more important, your luggage or the restrooms? <laughs> Which is more important, the check-in process or parking? And, and so give some thought to that, that if you can't have everything, what is most important? Rank those. And we ask you to complete that and fill that out uh, and turn that in, you know, within a few days. We'll send out electronically with some instructions. So we've done things by group, but now it's important to zero in. This, is good, this will be good feedback. And then when we get this information back, we'll, we'll throw that out to the community through our social media website that will be that'll be up and running here soon and um, we'll, we'll, we'll start with a baseline and uh, we'll just share what what this group's thoughts were and we'll see what other people think what's most important and you know would would people be willing to walk a little farther for a nicer restroom? Would people, you know, feel more comfortable about their, their baggage if they had Wi-Fi access? You know, what, what, how, would you, how would you rank those? No ties. Can't be a tie. It's got to be a one. Got to be a two. You don't have to rank every M below all, one, all the H's if you, if you have, now that you see them in here, just, just rank them in order. Anything that's got a letter, rank it. And so if there's, uh, let's see, under convenience column, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven places where there was indicated as to high correlation. So you should have one through eleven ranked. Environmental performance will be relatively easy. There's only one letter listed there. That'll be my check, see if you all are paying attention. See, your by rates at number one. And security will be pretty easy. There's only, there's only four there. But it gets a little bit tougher around convenience. And uh, it'll be interesting uh, around, you know, also about adaptability. We see a priority and, and business creation. Um, it'll be interesting there. So some of those columns will have more relevance, but clearly the, the adaptability and the convenience columns will be important because that's, that's what there's a lot of discussion about. We may have to make choices. 
That's what my parents did to me. Vegetables or dessert? That's how we decided things in the Fowler family. Any questions or comments on that? So you've got two, two action steps, picking your, your area of preference for your subcommittee, and then um, thinking about questions and, for stakeholders, and then ranking and prioritizing the key performance indicators within a column. Those are the, the action steps. And so we hope that those of you on the committee, this is, this is your opportunity now, uh, having sat through airport school and mostly in a listening mode, now we're really, it's been important for all of us to be engaged, be engaged and talking to your constituency, constituencies that you represent, soliciting opinions from family members, neighbors, business associates, anybody come up to you, you know, we, we want you really to be engaged and give some thought to this. It's why you're on this committee, um, because you represent so many different areas that we think we can get good coverage here and have good input. And so if, if that provides influence to you and you pass that through on your responses, that's, that's okay. We want your best thoughts. <coughs> and a lot of our questions we won't be able to answer. The stakeholders may not be able to answer, or we may uh, want to get other points of view other just from the direct stakeholders. And that's where the cons our hired consultant will come in. And so we'll get, we'll get those points of view as well. Other thoughts? Yes, Alicia. Um, on the KPI table, um, we learned two weeks, ago, I'm, and I'm looking at number nine, impact on KC bond capacity. Didn't we learn two weeks ago that it doesn't impact the bonding capacity of Kansas City? That's, that's correct. That, that was the, I shouldn't say that's correct. That was what was expressed to us. Okay. Um, we, we will validate that. Okay. So I wouldn't necessarily... That, that was an opinion expressed by one of our, uh, one of our guest speakers who was an you know, employee of the city. We're, we're going to validate that uh, other means, just to be certain, get other points of view on that. Other questions? We have, a, we have a few extra minutes here, and so I'd like to take advantage of that uh, luxury then um, to uh, see if anyone in our audience has any thoughts or suggestions about our approach here. Um, yes, sir, we have a... Could you please, could you please step State forward and... and where you're from. My name is Patrick Tui. I live in Waldo. The I'm sorry, you're with? Uh, uh, Show Me Institute. I live in Waldo. Okay, okay. Your website hasn't been updated since mid-July, so all the airport school documents that were presented in the committee aren't available. If, uh, if those could be added, it would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Could you guys use the mics a little better? A, a lot of, I mean. State your name for the record, sir, and where you live. I'm sorry? You have to state your name for the record and where you okay. live. Okay. My name's Bill Super. I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, 
a lot of people here, I mean, you got microphones in front of you. I guess you're forgetting. If you could maybe remind everybody, that would probably help us out here. All right. Help me at least. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I encourage anyone in the audience, if you, if you have trouble hearing, if people aren't speaking to the microphone, just please raise your hands because we'll, we'll assume that you're hearing everything unless you raise your hand. So thank you very much for everybody knows your, your device is movable in front of you, and so you can slide it closer, uh, and so you can speak into the microphone um, so we can, everybody can hear. Any other observations from the, the gallery? Maybe either the gallery can't hear me talking, or maybe they just don't have any observations. I, I assume it's the uh, the latter. Okay. Well, we want to. Oh, sir, do you have a? I'm Bill Mullins. I live in Mission Hills. Um, I had made a suggestion to to one or two members earlier that. <clears throat> when the community outreach strategy uh the web-based strategy gets put together that um, an effort be made to validate it <clears throat> with uh, folks in the community such as the social media club or the code for america brigade there are several groups that i think might be able to give you a, a, a preview um, as to how the efforts are going to be received in the community that could save some time you mean from a technical point of view? Or from a from user a standpoint. Okay. Uh, there, there's a common, always a combination of choosing tools and then finding the people who are accustomed to using those tools, and it's a bit of a challenge. Um, so I'm just suggesting that there is a, uh, a user group or several user groups out there who perhaps are more accustomed to this kind of interaction than uh, you all, uh, and I'm don't mean to insult anybody in that process of saying that, but... Um, Have you been talking to my son again? I, uh, I talk to a lot of people's sons, and uh, <laughs> I learn a lot. <laughs> so, uh, I, just by way of, of uh, uh, diving into those waters with some, some assurance uh, as to what's going to happen, um, there really are some ways. Uh, bring it to one million cups and share it with uh, folks uh, every Wednesday morning. Uh, I think that, that could really help uh, the stakeholders uh, grasp more readily what you're doing and how you expect to get help from them. Thank you. If, if, I, if I interpret what you're saying is you're saying maybe it'll be important to use several vehicles of outreach, technology being one, uh, public speaking or group meetings being another, is that what you're suggesting? Very much so. Okay. Um, social media all by itself is, is not just one channel. Um, and I was at a facilitated forum on mental health downtown here on Saturday where there was a rather sophisticated push button uh, vote as you go along in the questions mechanism that, so there really is, um, uh, a lot of uh, tools out there that help keep the questions in the foreground and the mechanics in the background. And we're kind of at the point where most of us don't know how to do that very efficiently. So I see all of this as a great opportunity to move the whole process of civic engagement forward and really encourage maybe even a subcommittee of the, of the group to kind of take the lead and uh, at least knowing what's happening if not entirely understanding it. Good suggestion. Thank you very much, Bill. You're welcome. Okay. Dave, can I uh, just, it's Crenshaw over here, Thanks. sorry. Uh, to add to that and build on that a little bit, I wonder if it's worth considering you and, and Bob writing um, in the star, there's a section in the bottom left corner that comes out once a week that says, in my own words, or in my opinion, I mean, it might be interesting to have you and Bob pen just a little article talking about air, what 
airport school has accomplished. I know we're going to do social media, but to some extent, to the extent, uh, if, if we wanted to alert stakeholders that we are about to engage in a broad-based dialogue, it'd be nice to alert them from kind of traditional media as well as the, the social media. So for you and uh, Bob to pen a short little piece there that lays out what we've been doing now since June and talk about airport school, summarize the, the key learning points we've had, but then to say we're coming out to talk to folks and mm -hmm. uh, just be on the lookout for us. There'll be, there'll be forums coming up. And I think that could be helpful as well because I do think it allows us Right now, the whole airport discussion has been driven by other folks, and, and now that we are about to engage that dialogue, it'd be nice to let people know in a formal way. Aside from a kind of a stiff press release, let them know what we've been doing. Um, <coughs> and here, um. That would that'd be, that'd be probably a good idea. So you're suggesting that Bob should write a piece. <laughs> uh, <Yes. laughs> Bob, if you're watching on Channel 2, we, uh, we appreciate where you are, and we, we just heard that. You, you couldn't hear all the dialogue, but it was overwhelming that you do that. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. I don't think it's fair that Bob gets to watch these proceedings in his pajamas, and I'm sitting here dressed up uh, driving downtown, but we'll, I'm sure he's working on something. Okay. Good, good suggestions. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, more opportunities to engage with uh, those of you in the gallery, and, and uh, we appreciate your interest in coming. So please keep coming and providing us your, uh, your feedback, because you've had you know, valuable feedback, and, and uh, we appreciate it very much. Obviously, I thank all of you for the time and effort you're putting in and, and are about to embark on some of this real uh, Real important is our, our outreach and stakeholder uh, dialogue. So our, uh, our next meeting, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is October 8th. Jay, is that right? Let's, let's verify that. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. Um, you know, we've got these alternating Tuesday meetings. Just, just, just continue marking your calendar um, for the next several months, at least through Mar March, um, unless that falls on St. Patrick's Day uh, or the day after St. Patrick's Day. But just, if you would, uh, just put placeholders out for the alternating Tuesdays uh, through March, let's say. Um, but the next meeting will be here, and it'll be subcommittee meeting. So it will not be led by uh, Bob and Dave. It'll be subcommittees meeting. We want to keep it the same place, same time as before, so we don't aren't moving you around and changing things. We keep we want to keep keep consistent. So we'll have uh, uh, subcommittee meetings. So we'll just ask the subcommittees to uh, find a configuration, move chairs around, meet as a group as you would, um, and have have that have that kind of dialogue. And it mainly is subcommittee brainstorming. So we're, we won't be asking subcommittees to debate anything or making decisions, but rather brainstorming, coming up with the questions, validating the stakeholders, and, and that will that'll be the meeting, uh, coming together, engaging, and, and beginning to uh, uh, prepare for future community outreach and dialogue. So we, it would really be important for all of the advisory group members to for sure make that next meeting and to get here prepared. And we, we will in advance, uh, once we receive everybody's responses, so you'll know in advance what group you'll be assigned to, if you will. 
and uh, you'll know that before the meeting and you can come prepared to have good discussion and brainstorming. And uh, time permitting, at the end of that meeting, we might even ask a spokesperson from each subgroup just to share a little bit about what they talked about. It doesn't have to be uh, a full report, but just time permitting, just give some idea, the sense of, of uh, what you talked about. And we'll ask uh, Jay to be the facilitator of that meeting. I'm, I don't know that I'll don't know that I'll be here, and Bob is questionable. But but uh, um, if Jay can be here to referee, um, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Any last questions? Great. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for helping us get started on this next phase. Congratulations on completing the airport school. That's right. Thank you. Yes. 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 Yes.